Hello again. Time for a little unexpected winter project for me that uh, got into the car a few weeks ago and stepped on the clutch pedal, felt it travel all the way to the floor. Now, down there you will see a clutch slave cylinder. I replaced that about a little, about somewhere around a year and a half ago because and along with that hose that is not exactly as smooth as it should be. I was having issues with getting it mounted and then just got frustrated and put it on however it go. So I'm going to replace those along with the Clutch Master here. That Clutch Master was last replaced in about 94, I think it was. Let me walk over to it, grab a light to help see. Uh, the thing is with clutches, the hydraulics, take the lid off here, you can see that fluid's kind of dark. It's after only a year. I did kind of clean it out some, drained out all the old fluid a year and a half ago when I got this car back on the road. But the problem is the seals do deteriorate. That's brake fluid, which is one of the nastiest fluids you can have in your car. And so i uh, going to replace the master and the slave. So I'm going to take some video. Hope. Uh, Hope this might help somebody out in the future. Before we begin, let's take a look at the parts we're going to be installing. Here's a clutch slave cylinder. You can see this is where the soft line goes in. That's your bleed nipple. And so that mounts underneath the car and pushes back on the clutch fork. Here's your master cylinder. This connects to the brake pedal. Now you notice this right here, that's for the clevis pin. So one of the first things I have to do in the car is remove the clevis pin. I'll do that before I put the car up in the air. And of course the, the reservoir for the Z car, you just need to use brake fluid for that. And here is the soft line that goes between the clutch uh, sl uh, slave and the hard line in the car. Now I'm going to loosen the master cylinder from, uh, from the clutch pedal. Then I'm going to take as much fluid out as I can, take that off, <clears throat> raise the car up in the air, take the slave cylinder off, let the hard, uh, let the hard line drain completely. Uh, run some brake cleaner through it, flush it out with some air, and try and get that nice and clean, make sure there's no debris in it that will affect the slave cylinder later. Okay, so now you're looking up underneath the dash at the clutch pedal. You can see the yoke from, from the master cylinder. And right now I'm just getting an idea where Okay, so the clevis pin comes in from the left side here. Right now, I don't know if I did that or somebody else did that in the past. But all you need is a hook. And then you... This is the easy part. And it's unhooked. I'm gonna push the clevis pin out. Now, should be able to pull the master cylinder loose once I undo the bolts on the other Part side. Part of uh, doing this whole project is make sure that I'm planning things out enough in advance that, uh, one, I don't waste much time on video, and two, I don't have to go back and forth getting tools and what have you. So, you need a 12 millimeter for the bolts here that hold the 
clutch master to the firewall. The 10 millimeter, I prefer using a banjo uh, banjo uh, wrench or flare nut wrench, whatever you want to call it, to uh, hold that in place because I don't like slipping and rounding off the uh, fittings on the hydraulics. I also have a turkey baster to remove most of the fluid and you can see down there I have a rag because I want to make sure I don't drop brake fluid down on the car there's been enough over the years I don't need to make it worse so you might be able to see that and I'll show it later how dark this stuff is so just I already got most of it out just with one draw. I'm going to try one more time. And that's about all I'm going to get from using the turkey baster there. Uh, I don't know if that there's looks like some something floating around in it. I don't know if that's some leftovers in this jar. But uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if I can really make it where you can see down in there. Yeah, you can see that fluid is kind of dark. Stuff floating around in it. I'll get rid of that later. But uh, now I'm going to put that on the floor out of, out of the way so I don't trip on it and knock it over and break the char. But uh, so what I'm going to do now is just take a rag, kind of clean out on the inside there. And you can see, after I pull it out, see all that black? That's deteriorated rubber in there. So, I am going to go ahead and open up the bleed screw down at the slave cylinder. Let some fluid out there and try to make it where this hydraulic line can just drain out so that way I can this remove the mic ball start there um, grab the wrong size wrench didn't notice I had an eight millimeter bleed screw on that I can't really get you guys in to see this very well but trust me on that um, so what I'm going to do is reach in here Probably you've just seen my arm for the most part. Not really worried about what might come out because yeah, come loose, come loose. I have a drip pan underneath and I'm not keeping this soft line here, so I'm not worried about where any fluid might go. And I gotta see if I can't whoop. All sorts of gravity going on here. Okay. You might even have a better view that way. Let me see if I can't get underneath here. This is not easy to do from up top. That'd be knocking you around a little. So there we go. Try a different, different wrench here. <sighs> See if this one won't do a little bit better. There we go. And I see it tripping. I'd rather not drip on the ranch. Don't know why it's sticking on there. I guess I'll have to leave it there. Anyway, got it loose now. You can see it's draining. I'm going to go over 
and loosen the hydraulic line on the master cylinder, let it all drain out. And you'll see a little bit more dripping down in it a little bit. Well, not I'm going to actually take you with me. Okay. Now I'm going to get the hydraulic line up top loose. I'll let the rest of the fluid go out through the bleed screw. And look at there we go. Gotta just get it loose here. Not quite finger tight yet. Like I said, I like using these banjo or flare nut wrenches to avoid possibility of rounding the edges on the fitting here. So I'm not quite loose enough. That's a little bit of light. Let's see. Let's get that light back. There we go. Make it where you guys can see things better. with this loose I can now safely go to a 10 millimeter open end and turn it let's use the stubby because when it's handy in two it'll let me swing it wide here so you can go almost all the way around there we go and that line is loose so now that the line is loose it should be laying all the fluid so, drain out. Try to get my tool free off of the uh, sleeve cylinder. It doesn't want to come off yet, so we won't worry about that right now. I'm going to go ahead and break this loose. Take my 12 underneath here. I'm going to break it loose, and then I'm going to... That should be enough. Get the power tool on it. Okay. okay. Try to lose tools underneath. Okay, that one's off. Yep. Finish getting the top one off. Lose the washer. Or the nut. Let's go ahead and get that. There. Okay, so now I have this out. What I'm going to do is take this over to the bench and make sure. Oh, look at that. The lock nut was not down on the. Uh, clutch but what I'm, uh, what I'm going to do is make sure the new one is about the same length so that way it is adjusted and ready to go here's the new master you can see this uh, yoke is tightened all the way so I'm going to compare it 
It's about the same length as the uh, old one. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera. I'll show you side by side. Okay, so that's about all I can do to adjust it. And then you put the nut up against it. So just to give you some comparison here, they are about the same length. This one's just a little shorter. Hopefully it won't be a problem. Seems like that other one was out quite a bit. Then once you have it, and I uh, gotta set the man set the old master off because I noticed it was spilling some fluid here. Fortunately, it was spilling it on a fender mat. So, clean that stuff up. And now that I have this in place, I take this 12 millimeter here, and I'm just going to lock it up against the uh, okay, 13 millimeter. Okay, 14 millimeter. Lock them up against each other. That way, it'll pretty much stay in place. Now that uh, lock nut is, that jam nut, I guess you could call it, is up against the yoke. I can put this back in. So, give me just a moment, I'll turn the camera around. So after installing the uh, Clutch Master, I found that, it, and doing all the bleeding, I found that I wasn't getting any action on the slave cylinder. Well, that turned out because the rod was too short. So when you have the right length rod, by the way, this is about how far down you want the yoke here. You just, you don't want much of any of this showing. The nice thing is you can, um, <clears throat> when this is installed, you can turn the actuating rod with a pair of pliers in the car to get the rod to the right length and you know, that information is in the factory service manual. Now if you happen to get a master cylinder that has the short rod like the one that uh, you saw earlier you can take these out and swap them around. You just have to move this cover off and in this case uh, let's see can will it focus? Yes. Okay you have to get that wire clip out of the way and this cover and the rod will come right out. Um, the master that I installed had a C-clip, so I just took a pair of snap ring pliers and used that. And I took the actuating rod out of the old master cylinder and popped it in there. And it gave me the right length once I adjusted the yoke here to the proper length in the car. This gives you a good view. I am now going to... Take the cap out here of the master. I'm going to run it back in, make sure that it goes over these posts. About to push one of them out. Might have to get the wife unit out here to. Oh, she who must be obeyed. Oh, no, it went right on. Good. So now they're in place. What I want to make sure about, I'm going to go inside and make sure that the, um, the yoke is on either side of the clutch pedal. Because if it's not, that's going to make for difficulty operating. And the after wrestling with the clevis pin for a couple minutes, I realized. One of the things that probably helped me out here is if I had the master firmly against the firewall. So 
that's what I'm going to do. Get myself that extra quarter, half inch or so, so that it will hold up. Need to get a magnet, hold on. Drop the washer down there, so we get the magnet. It's like playing operation. There we go. So no buzzing, thank goodness. Put the washer on the bottom, stud. It's trapped on my glove. There we go. Okay, now I can put this on tighten. Okay, that's snug. Get the lower one. And snug it off with the uh, small wrench here. There we go. Just double check the top one. Yeah, okay. That should be plenty of torques. Get this lined up. Now you'll see a lot of times that the instructions call for bench bleeding. I'm going to be a rebel, break the rules, and I'll show you later why. But now that I got that in place, I can start tightening this. Got it. Okay, got that snugged in there. Oh, I gotta, I gotta break it loose. I forgot. I was gonna flush this out some. So that snugging is gonna wait for later. It's one of the beautiful things about getting old, you stop remembering things. Hope the sarcasm was evident. Okay, back to using the open end to try and Speed it along now that I got it loose. I don't have to worry about slippage as much when it's loose, so I don't mind that it's not a flare. Ah, okay. Let's see. Is that. No, that's not handy. Well, almost. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. So I can flush that out, clean it up, and have it all in good shape. Now to go attack the clevis pants. Okay, Sorry, I broke one anything. loose. Let's see if I can't get this on the other.
one down. Two down. Uh, so, let me see if I can't break this loose here. Is it 17 here? No. 18? Maybe. Let's see how tight it is. That's 17. Of course. There's not 17. Okay, so now try to break this loose. Ah. Ah. No, nope, not gonna let me break it loose. Okay. Nope. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is pull this loose so I can get around the uh, nut there that will allow me to break everything loose. Well, let's see. Maybe if I... Let's see if it'll let me... I can hold it on with just one nut here. Just enough to hold it in place. Now, let's see. No, 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 no. Get that loose. Get you in. There. Try that again. There, now I might be able to break it loose. Yep, there we go. Zip you back off. Now, I can take this off of the line probably gonna drip a little bit that's okay we got brake clean and rags and other stuff so there we go and a drip pan too so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to tie a rag around here and push some air, or push some brake fluid through and some air through to kind of make sure everything in this line is cleaned out from having that old brake fluid. Okay, now to wrap this around. There we go. And I'm going to see if I can't tighten this enough. Uh, let's see. There we go. Hoping I can get this tight enough that it. Come on, zip tie. Nope, I got it backwards. I thought so. 50 50 90 principle. 50 50 chance of getting it wrong. 90% of the time, it will be wrong. There. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is shove some brake fluid or brake cleaner down through here. Spray it for a little bit. 
and then take some compressed air and blow it through to help push out anything. Okay, trying to shoot the brake cleaner in. Unfortunately, I'm holding the can upside down, so I don't know how well it's going to do it. Straw came out. Okay, so let's try this again. Brake cleaner upside down, so I don't know how it'll turn out. I got the vacuum line here and the brake booster, knocking the straw loose. So I gotta get it. You only saw what I was doing right now, you'd laugh. Of course, the fact that I see some fluid on the underside of the brake booster is not a good thing. I'll have to check that later. There's definitely a lot of fluid here. Yeah, that's a bad sign. Huh. Try to get a little more light over here so I can see what I'm doing. And it's only gas. I need some fluids. Oh, and I knock the straw loose again. This time, where I can't see it. Where did you go, straw? Time for another straw. Any straws around here? No, no straws around here. Shame I can't do it better because that will be real nice. I wish they made the brake cleaner with the flip-up straw like they do for WD-40. You only to buy a few cans of that. Yeah. I just lose another straw. Okay, down to my last straw. Okay. Oh well, just keep going underneath and finding straws if that's the case. So, got the straw in. snake down here, right through there, yeah, can I get the straw down into it, maybe, nope, okay, how about I move you, I'm rearranging things, just trying to get where I can spray brake cleaner down here, Yeah, I just lost another straw. Okay. Hopefully you saw something down there. Because there wasn't much to see up here except for brake cleaner and spraying out everywhere. Uh, trying to get one of these straws that fell down. Almost got one. There we go. Okay. I'm 
Trying to get smart enough, I get some down there. Yeah, this is going to get fast forwarded. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully that sprayed something down there for the compressed air follow-up. I'm going to try to clean off some of the spray clean. <sighs> and let's see. Compressed air follow-up coming in. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> what we got. Got to remove the zip tie. Hopefully I didn't leave you too much in the dark here. Yeah, you can see there's some gunk in there. can definitely feel that it's wet. That's good. So I got the brake cleaner through. Huh, crush washer. Okay, so now... I'm going to get this clip off so that I can break the slave cylinder loose or the hose for the slave cylinder loose from the hard line. Okay, it looks like we got to go for plan B, which is to use a screwdriver up top to try and pop it loose. Yeah, it's getting there. There we go. It's 
now, hopefully, the pliers, I can get it off. That just doesn't sound right. I can remove it. That sounds better. No, it still need to be up top. Okay. So all I'm doing is leveraging it one side after another until I got it where I can get the screwdriver in there. Okay. So used to doing that with pliers. I don't even remember how I did it a year, year and a half ago. Anyway, now that's loose. So I should be able to pull this out. No, nope. it goes up through. Okay, so I am definitely going to have to try and work that loose from down here. Is this 18 or 19? 19. But I got a little bit more level room here. Okay, so and now I can turn this one instead of trying to go up top once I get the uh, wrench on. Come on. There. That's the 18 side. That's not going to work. That's 19. I'm going to go up top and make sure I get this wrench on the, the fitting properly. I'll be right back. That's like, okay, yeah. Let's put the camera back up into view. There we go. Okay. That is definitely in place. Can you focus? There we go. So we want to loosen. can get a good angle. Let's see if I can turn this now a little bit. Ah. And then you go back up top again, make sure I'm not twisting things around. <sighs> nope, looks good. So, let's see. There we go. Now, can uh, Go back to, let's see, where can I get it? Nope. Don't know 
if I've broken anything loose. Feels like I might have because I'm seeing some brake fluid up there. Now, flip it over. Come on. That should go like nothing like trying to put a flare nut wrench on the line. Okay. So let's see. I was tempted to drop the starter just to make this easier. Wait, this way. Go toward each other. Okay, so you have to go on. There we go. That's snapped on. You're snapped on. this over again. See if I can get it on. There. Feels like it's on. I don't think that'll work. Uh, I have a 19 crow's foot either. I should look. Okay, don't know how much I missed there, but what I'm trying to do is get this nice and loose here. This fitting doesn't is not fun to deal with. Oh. Although I might have just broken it loose enough that I, it's kind of hard to tell from down here. Probably gonna have to go up top. Still not quite loose enough. Let's see. Might be loose enough I can go at it with a regular wrench from up top. I just felt it move some. Come on. Lord knows flipping this flare over it's not fun. Yeah, I'm going to go at it from the top with the 10. Ugh. Did I have a 10 with me? Nope, that's an 8. Ugh. Carefully. Where's my tent study? There's my tent study. Okay. I'm getting it very slowly because. Bell housing is in the way. Uh, the starter. But they had to put it, put this line right by the bell housing. Well, right by where the starter mounts to the bell housing. Does make it easier that the cars partially up in the air, so I can't really get to the uh, little extra effort to reach down to the fitting here. Ooh, I 
have it. There. That's right, I forgot. I gotta take these hoses loose here. Because this, this line fits inside the other line. So, yeah, I need about a quarter inch clearance here that I don't have. So, let's see what I can do to remedy that. Yeah, I'm uh, going at it with a cordless screwdriver above you. Looks like it's a seven millimeter head. Yep. Gravity. Okay. So, where did it? Oh, here it is. I have to show you guys later what I was pulling apart here. But now I can pull the hose loose, and it's in the drink. Okay, that is done. So now. Assemblies, the reverse of disassembly. Okay. First, I'm going to blast some more air through. Okay, nothing. Good. So, now I gotta find the. Oh, there. And that was a mistake. It's a mistake. One thing that didn't come with this hose is a ceiling washer, so I'm going to go find one.
Okay, I found the ceiling washer. So it's just gonna hang out down here with the uh, slave. Now, to start putting everything back together. Ah. Okay, we start with this. Helps to have the correct end in position. There we go. Okay, so the problem is this hose is not quite like the uh, previous hose. Previous hose, I know, would stay in place. This one does not have such a feature. So, now the only advantage I have is that it is a uh, Seventeen. So if I grab the ten, I can do that till it's somewhat tight, and then hit it with the flare nut wrench to make sure it's fully in there. Uh, oops. So I need to find my ten. Where's my ten stubby? Ah, up here, out of sight. Okay, so 17 on the bottom. Ah. Well, let's get this into place. There we go. And that's not quite in place. 17. There. Now, as I do it blind up top, ah. okay, so it feels like that is more or less locked in place. See if I can put the clip on. Hammer. Anything's a hammer when you need it to be. Okay. So, next, this is the fun part. Gotta get the, uh, Slave cylinder on, snug it, and then tighten it to the car. Finish snugging the hose that can't turn anymore. So in order to avoid the twist, you have to put it on like this. And it would help if I had it Probably at an angle like this. There we go. Seventeen. Seventeen.
Uh, there. Now what I have to do is get this to flip and get it into the seated position. Get one bolt in. There, okay. Oh, that was the easy part, unfortunately. Now to get bolt number two in place. There we go. Oh, nope. I thought I had it threaded. Obviously it was not. Let's get this loose enough that I can let's see. So the problem is it's got a little bit of a twist there. And that's not gonna work. So, I need to break that loose before it cross threads. This is the problem I had the previous time. Uh, there we go. Take you loose too. Okay. So, gonna swap it up now. Try and get that upper one in place, because that seems to be the harder one, if I recall correctly. Got it lined up. I'm going to use a regular ratchet instead of a powered one just to make sure things aren't cross-threaded. Dang, I got a oil leaking from everywhere. <sighs> That's probably from checking the oil. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Now, I'm going to take that loose again. Take you loose again. Is that 13? Well, there's definitely 14. It just feels so dang loose. Okay, so what I want to do is just run it up. Okay. Just running it in just to see how good it feels on the threads. Because the problem is the slave pushes. It's just slightly out of alignment. And that's what's frustrating me here. Uh. Ooh. Held on to everything. Get back where I can see things. Come on, go in the hole. you want that to be fairly 
snug up against there when it's when the slave when the clutch is disengaged or engaged I should say so that way it has to travel to be disengaged okay so there's that so now I just need to do that and hopefully Feels like that should work. So let's run it in. <laughs> Knocked you guys out of view. Okay. Let's get this one. There we go. That should be a 14, shouldn't it? Is it 14 or 15? It's a 14. Why do you got a 15 on there? No wonder it didn't feel right. Okay. Let's see. Let's get that tight. Ah, that one's tight. tight okay we got two tight bolts there we got the hydraulic line in place I just need to fasten it up there but we can do that later so it's getting to the fun part now where I get to try to reverse bleed it okay and now the secret weapon for this project instead of trying to lead the clutch from the top what I'm going to do is push fluid up from the bottom I've heard people talk about doing this the thought is you push the fluid up fighting or so that the air bubbles actually go up instead of trying to push the air bubbles down and through the system so we're going to go see how that works out for this Okay, so now it's time to try reverse bleeding on the clutch. I've just loosened the, the bleed screw here. And what I can do is now I will put, I have the pump here. I'm going to attach it to the nipple. It will let me come on there we go and I have a camera up top too well that didn't stay on try to get get it where I can see decent there we go ah oh. okay I am gonna have to hold this and get the nipple on from what I researched it's just a matter of Doing it slowly enough that you can well let's see oh there's the fluid starting to flow hold that on what good And I see some fluid flowing out here where I don't want it. Okay, so now what I want to do is try and get my wrench uh, so I can close off the bleed screw here. 
because I want to check it up top. So over there, get get over. Right, you go first and stop where the camera is. Okay, where the cap is off on the clutch. So okay, if you look, see where the camera's pointed. Oh, right there. Yep. Yeah, you um, see, there's fluid. Yeah. I'm going to try and push fluid up from underneath. What I need to know is if you see any bubbles or anything that would indicate that I'm pushing fluid through. Okay. Because I'm thinking the fluid's not going through. So, just trying to put some gloves on here. Why did you turn off the other feeder? It ran out of gas. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to burn all the propane tonight. <laughs> so. Anyway, I'm going to be underneath here, okay. and I'll tell you when I start pushing fluid through it. Because okay. this could be a fail. Okay, so that's not the right wrench. This is the right wrench. Okay. Well, you really won't see much in the way of bubbles until I start pushing fluid through. Okay. Let me, uh, first off, I gotta attach the hose. Bubbles are coming through, one right after the other. All done. Okay. Uh, but, What's more important is that you start seeing bubbles after I start pushing fluid through. See anything now? Yeah. Like, bubbles are coming through. Yep. Yep, they're bubbling. Like bubbling a lot? Uh, bubbling a good amount. How about now? No. Is the fluid level rising? Oh, there's the bubble. There's the bubble. No, the fluid level is not rising. Okay. But seeing bubbles is a good thing. There's, there's a few more bubbles. There's some more bubbles. No, it's bubbling. Still bubbling. But the fluid level is not rising. And it's not lowering either, it's staying thing. Still bubbling. Bubble, 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 bubble. Bubble. Still bubbling. Not as much, but a little bubble. Easy bubble. Bubbles. Okay, a few more bubbles. There's no bubbling. No bubble. A few bubbles. No bubble. And the fluid level is rising. Woohoo! A few bubbles. It is great to have a wonderful assistant. <laughs> Is it still rising? Um, I can't tell. It's still rising. A couple of bubbles just came up. Yeah, it's still rising. Still rising. You were about a oh, quarter of an inch to a half an inch from the top now. Okay. Tell me when you really think it's a quarter. Okay. Stop. You're a quarter. 
Okay. Just gotta try and grab my wrench. Close off the bleed screw. There we go. Yay! Yay! And that is reverse bleeding. Okay. So I have video down here going through it and I can't turn off the camera. Well, maybe I can.